Come on, somebody. Oh, 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 He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, my Jesus, how I love calling your name, oh, Jesus. When I felt so all alone, but when I needed Jesus, all I had to do was call. I call him in the morning, I call him late at night, but when I get down on my knees, oh Jesus, make it right. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, how I love. Calling your name, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh come on, give it to me, your name is the same, I remember a time, I felt so all alone, but when I needed Jesus, all I had to do was call, I call him in the morning, I called him late at night, but when I got down on my knees, oh, Jesus, made it right. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, how I love calling your name, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, oh, your name is the same where my troubles surround me and I'm in despair Lord you told me you'd be right there when all my problems have just begun I'm not gonna worry anymore cause you've already won oh Jesus Jesus, how I love, oh, I love, calling your name, oh, Jesus, you're my Jesus, oh, every day, your name is the same, I call on oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, how I love, oh, yes, I Calling your name, oh Jesus, you're my Jesus, oh every day, your name is the same. I remember a time, oh I felt so all alone, the Lord you told me you'd be right there. I call him in the morning, I call him late at night, but when I get down on my knees, oh Jesus, make it right, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh how I love, oh how I love, Every day, your name is the same. I call on Jesus. Oh, you're my Jesus. Lord, I love. Oh, to call on your name. Oh, Jesus. He's my Jesus. Every day, your name is the same. What a wonderful name, oh how I love, love. to call on your name, oh Jesus, no other name but Jesus, every day, your name is the same.
it, uh, I love the Word of God, amen, and how it brings excitement into your life um, and makes you think. Aren't you glad the way the Bible makes you think? Amen. Um, we need to study the Word of God to show ourselves approved according to the Scriptures. Amen. And it makes us who we are if we follow after Him. Amen. And we was reading in our Bible readings, we're in the book of Amos this past week. And I want to read a verse that uh, got my attention. <coughs> book of Amos chapter 4, verse 7 and 8 is what I want to read. Um, this whole chapter talks about uh, um, God trying to get his people back to him <coughs> and the things that he did. <coughs> yeah, I think it's okay. Amos chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And also I, I have re uh, withholding the rain from you. There were yet three months to harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon, and the other, and the piece rare upon, it rained not withered. Verse 8. <clears throat> so two or three cities wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet they have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. A lot of times what I like doing when I read the scriptures, I don't do it all the time, but I do, I do, do it a lot. Um, I'll read the King James Version. Then on my Bible app, there's different versions, and I'll pick a different version and just listen to it. Because um, <clears throat> I want to get the Word of God in, in any way that I can. So I want to do it with my eyes, reading it. Sometimes I'll read it out loud with my voice, and I want to listen to it. I guess in one sense, I'm not using it as my sense of smell. Um, naturally, I don't use my sense of smell anyways because I can't smell. And not because of COVID. I couldn't smell before COVID. I just, uh, I've had a couple of different sign of surgeries. Sometimes it opens up. Sometimes it doesn't. But sometimes it's a blessing. <laughs> Amen. We got a, a few shoppers in Kroger. That everybody say they s smell. Well, I can't smell them, so I don't know if they do or not. They look like they smell, but... <laughs> Amen. I'm sure you have them at Walmart too, don't you? Amen. And uh, so I like, I like to get the Word of God any way that I can with my eyes talking out loud, um, listening uh, to it. So I, I listened to another version of it, and it's really what got me in Amos chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. And it's the MSG version. If you've got a Bible app, you can go to the MSG version. But it says this. Yes, I am one that stopped the rains three months short of harvest. I'd make it rain in one village, but not another. I'd make it rain in one field, but not another. And that would dry up. People would stagger from village to vi village, crazed for water, never quenching their thirst. But you never got thirsty for me. You ignored me. When I read that, you never got thirsty for me, something hit me inside. Amen. You never got thirsty for me. And I begin to pray, God, make me thirsty for you. God, make me thirsty for you. Amen. I, I don't want to lose my thirst for God. In a dry and thirsty land, I want to be thirsty for God. And I thought of the song I told Becky. I said, Becky, get ready to help me sing this this morning. Amen. But I thought of the song that says, I am tired and thirsty, O oh Lord. Send the rain. Send the rain. Go ahead, Becky. I'll follow you. I am dying Help us thirsty, now this morning. Oh Lord. Send your rain. Send your rain. Lord, I need oh, yes, I your do. touch again. Send the rain. Send the rain. Oh, let it rain. Oh, let it be your prayer this morning, God. Let it rain. But you never got thirsty for me. You go from city to city, from village to village. Thirsty for water, I never quenching your, your thirst. 
times of But you never got thirsty for me until I Oh make me no thirsty more. Jesus Lord I need your cleansing power send the rain Oh send the rain I am dying in thirst Oh yes send the rain Oh, send the rain, oh, let it rain, let it flow Oh, yes, heaven. Jesus, let it rain upon my let soul. This morning, God, make us thirsty for you. Don't like it. Let's be like the Israelites I that wandered from place to place looking for something to drink, I Lord. But they never got thirsty for you. Until I thirst no more In this dry and weary land In this dry and weary land Send your rain Oh, send your rain Lord, we need your touch again Send the rain Oh, send the rain Sing it now Let it rain let, Let it pour, pour from, from heaven. heaven. Let it rain to, to revive my soul. Let I it rain. rain. I, I need your streams of refreshing until I thirst. Oh, one more no verse more. now. Oh, let it rain all across this nation. Oh, let it rain to revive my soul. We need your rain. We need your springs of refreshing until I thirst no more. Until I thirst no more. Oh, yes, Jesus. I want you to understand something this morning. In this world, there is no water like the water that God has. We think sometimes when we need a spiritual refreshing, we try to get it in a natural world where there is no water that God can give you in this natural world. We, we can look through all different religions, but there's only one religion. That's the true worship of God. God Jehovah, God Jesus, amen, he's the only one that can give us any kind of water, amen. There are uh, empty man-made faucets that will offer you peace, but there is no peace in this world, amen. Only God creator himself can give you the peace that passes all understanding. We can look for love, human love, amen, we can look at learning, amen, pleasures in this life, I mean, we'll try to look for wealth and popularity and all these other things. They seem to have a, try to get a inner satisfaction, but they're nothing but a mirage, amen, in a dry and thirsty place. We see something that looks real, but it's not real. They are clouds without rain, the scripture says. And at the end, amen, when we're looking, our soul is still empty, Amen. God, make me thirsty for you. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13 says this. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken the fountain of living waters and have hewed themselves out of cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. He said they've, they've done two things, amen. They've forsaken the true living water and tried to make themselves cisterns, man-made cisterns. They say cisterns is a shallow collection take. Amen. It's not a fresh water. Amen. It's not a running water. Amen. It's a cistern that well, a lot of times gets its water from uh, rainwater. Amen. It's dependent on the rainfall. Amen. And it can't refill itself. And usually it's dirty water. It collects bugs and frogs and parasites, amen, and other trash. And the water is stagnant. I mean, that's what the world has to offer, a stagnant water. They went searching from village to village, city to city, but their thirst was not quenched. But he said, you were not thirsty for me. 
Well, Jesus is the living water that they forsake him. Amen. I, I read, amen, about artesian well. Amen. Artesian well, amen, is a flowing well. It's moving. It's a clean water. It's filtered water. It's pure water. It's self-supporting water. Amen. You don't have to pump it. Amen. You don't, it don't need to fill it. Amen. It doesn't need any rainfall, but it takes care of itself. Amen. That's the living water of God. We have cisterns, amen, that we try to go to and drink and get relief. We have man-made cisterns. We try to go, amen, perhaps some people go to the food, try to find that. They, they go to TV, amen, try to find that water or counseling. They may even go to different religious groups. Amen. They may go to painkillers or, or stress reducers. Amen. They may get, go to different people. Amen. They may read a book. They may go shopping. They may go yard selling. Amen. Something to try to find that. Amen. Different diversions of all kinds to try to find that drink. Amen. Go from village to village, from city to city, but still not quenching that thirst. Amen. But after drinking of the fresh water, Amen, the clean artesian water. Who wants to desire a water, amen, that's filthy, that's scummy, they, from a cistern water. Amen, we need a fountain. Look at your neighbors, I need a fountain of water. Amen, that's always moving. Amen, in this world we search for things to try to satisfy, amen, our soul. Amen, and try to satisfy that inner man, amen, that we try to look for. We straggle, straggle from place to place. We search everywhere for it, amen. But the Bible says only Jesus is that thirst quencher. Amen, we sing the song, if you've got pain, He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. Maybe we need to add, if you feel thirsty, he's a thirst quencher. Amen. Jesus is that thirst quencher. Amen. Only Jesus can give that quench, that thirst. Amen. That he placed inside of you. Psalms chapter 42, word and two says this. And as the heart panteth after the water brooks. So my soul panteth after thee, O God. My, thirst, my soul thirsteth for thee, God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Amen. Where, where there is water, there is life. Amen. Where there's water, things begin to grow. Where there's water, Plants begin to sprout and flowers begin to bloom. Amen. But where there is no water, there's death. There's no life. Psalms chapter 63 verse 1 says, O God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. We live in a nation where there is no water. People try to go for different things. If we can ever see the story of Amos, we see it now in the United States where people are searching all over the place, going from place to place, looking to quench that thirst, but they could not find it. But they did not get thirsty for God. We see that now, I believe now. But David said I, he thirsted like a deer. Amen. Running and fleeing from the hunter as a deer that panteth after a drink of water. David said, that's how I got thirsty. Amen. He said, he, the deer said, if I know that if I can just reach the water, amen, my life will be saved and I'll be refreshed and I can escape the hunter, amen, that's after me. And I know I won't die. I believe we need to get thirsty like a deer that panteth after the water. He said, if I could just get to Jesus, I know everything will be okay. I want to get thirsty for God. Lift your hand and say, God, make me so thirsty that it's all that matters is getting a drink from you that I know everything to be okay. David was thirsty like a man in the desert where there was no water in a dry and thirsty land. I read a story about a man that, a young man that went to a preacher. He said, preacher, tell me how to have a successful ministry and how to get really thirsty for God. After a while, a couple of hours talking to him, he just wasn't getting through the young man, the preacher wasn't. So he said, I'll take it. He took him down to a, a river and they got in the river, and the preacher took his hand on his, and the young man's head and ducked his head under the water. 
He said the young boy was, boy was fighting and doing everything he can to try to get up, but he kept holding him down. Finally, the preacher let him up. He said, what did you desire more than anything while you was there? He said, air. I wanted air. I needed air. He said, well, when you get that thirsty for God, then that's all you think about and that's all you want. Then you'll find God. Then you'll reach heaven. Amen. And God will make a way where there seemeth to be no way. If I can get thirsty for God, amen, like nothing else matters, amen, and fall in love with him and get thirsty for him, for the Israelites in the book of Amos, they searched all over, but they did not get thirsty for God. Hallelujah. We need to get thirsty like a drowning man looking for air. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Everybody's thirsty for everything else except for right living. Amen. God, lift your hands and say, God, make me thirsty for right living. Amen. In a world, amen, that's going upside down, calling good, evil, and evil good. God, let there me still be a remnant of people that are thirsty for God, that are thirsty, amen, for righteousness and right living, clean living. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, the Bible says this, I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephen's, that is the first fruits of Antioch, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have addicted themselves. If I could get addicted to Jesus, amen, like somebody that's addicted to drugs. Like somebody that's addicted to alcohol. Like somebody that's addicted to even sports. Amen. They say, I've got to have it. I've got to have it. Amen. Somebody that's addicted to drugs or alcohol or different things. Amen. They've got to have it. No matter what their cost is, they've got to have it. Amen. If I could get addicted to Jesus in that same way that I've got to have it. Amen. God, make me so thirsty for you that you're all I think about. You're all I want. I've got to have it. I've got to have it. Enoch got thirsty for God. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, the Bible says Enoch walked with God. It could have said, it easily said, Enoch was thirsty for God, and he was not, for God took him. When you're walking, it's a continual forward motion. You're not stopped. Amen. In a Christian life, we've got to keep walking. Amen. And how you do that is you keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't look to the left or to the right. Amen. You got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't let nothing get your eyes off Jesus. Amen. Keep that thirsty soul. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus and keep walking. Then one day you'll see him face to face. Make me thirsty for you, Jesus. Went from village to village, from city to city, amen, and they could not quench their thirst, but you did not get thirsty for me, God said. Moses got thirsty for God in Exodus thirty three eighteen. 18. And he said, God, show me your glory. He was thirsty. Elijah got thirsty for God in 2 Kings 2, 11, and a fiery chariot came down out of heaven, amen, and took him away. Elisha got thirsty, amen, for God in 2 Kings 2, 9. He said, give me a double portion of what you've got. He got thirsty for it. Elisha, amen, there was recorded seven miracles, and Elijah, and Elisha, there was recorded 14 miracles, a double portion of what he had, amen. 2 Kings 13, 21. One. Elisha had so much power of God in his life, even at his death. Amen. There was carrying a dead man. Amen. They take him to his grave and they threw him up on the bones of Elisha. And the Bible said he revived himself. Amen. After he lay and fell on the bones of Elisha. You know, being thirsty for God will do, it'll bring power in your life. Amen. If you get thirsty for God and you begin to seek Him, that in a way that that's all that matters is get a hold of Him, it'll bring power in your life. And there's a difference between power and strength. Amen. Goliath had strength, but David had power. Say, God, I don't need the strength of the world. I need the power of God in my life. And the only way I can do that is being thirsty for God. 
Jacob got thirsty for God in Genesis chapter 32, 40, 24 through 29. You'll read that Jacob wrestled with the angel, a man of God all night. He said, bless me. As he began to wrestle, he wrestled so long to his leg. Amen. Got out of joint. And finally, Jacob quit wrestling and started clinging. I want to say that again. Finally, Jacob stopped wrestling and started clinging, amen, unto him. And the angel said, what is your name? He said, it's Jacob. I believe it's time that we stop, quit, we quit fighting God and start clinging unto God. You can't fight against God, amen. So let's give up, give it all to Jesus and start holding on to him, start clinging into him, amen. When you do that, amen, start seeking him, amen, like Jacob, you'll be changed. The angel said in verse 28, Thou, your name would no more call, call Jacob, but it be called Israel. For, I, uh, for as a prince, there is power with God and with men. And he prevailed. Amen. When I get thirsty for God and I begin to drink of the fountain of God, it will bring power into my life and it will change my life. Lift your hands again and say, God, make me thirsty. David in Psalms chapter 27 verse 4, we all know this, one thing that I have desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. You see, David, amen, got thirsty for God. He said, the only thing that I desire is to dwell in your temple, is to dwell with you, to be with you, God. That's what my greatest desire is. Amen, one thing that I have desired. Amen, if we get to a place in our life that only one thing really matters, and that's getting a hold of Jesus. Like the woman, amen, with the issue of blood. Amen, I love this story. She raised all that she had, and all the physicians had the disease of blood disease or the issue for 12 long years spent all that she had but then she heard about Jesus and she said if I could just touch the hem of his garment if I could but touch one part of his robe that I know I'd be healed and my sins all forgiven. If I could but touch him, I know I'd be whole. And she pressed through the crowd, amen, because that was all that mattered. She'd been pushed back, pushed down, pushed away, but she said it doesn't make any difference. I've got to keep on pushing until I touch Jesus. And when she touched Jesus, she was made every bit whole because it was all that mattered in her life. Amen. God, make me thirsty for more of you. She got thirsty and touched Jesus as she was made whole. John chapter 7, verse 37 through 38 says, In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Would well, you notice here, Jesus has said there's two things that we must do. First, he says, come unto me. Number one, we've got to come unto him. Number two, he said, drink. Come unto me and drink. Amen. And then watch your life be changed. Amen. He told the woman at the well. Amen. If you drink of the water that I give, you'll never thirst again. Hallelujah, God, make me thirsty for your water. Amen, not the water of any old well. Amen, but the well of God. Amen, where springs of water will begin to flow out of my belly. Amen, because of what God has given me. Amen, make me thirsty, God. Matthew again, 5, 6, They that hunger after righteousness shall be filled. Amen, when we get into a place, amen, when we're thirsty for things like worship, Amen. God, make me thirsty for a worship in you, Jesus. When we get to a place where we get thirsty for more prayer, amen, and seeking God, amen, things that begin to change in our life. When we get to get to a place where we're thirsty for fasting and we're thirsty to go into church and we're thirsty for the love of the Word of God, amen, lift your hands again and say, God, make me thirsty for more of you, amen, Tell all I want is you, Jesus. They wandered from village to village, from street to street, from city to city. But you never got thirsty for me. You never got thirsty for me. I don't want to be like these Israelites and the Amos are talking about. Amen. When God was trying to get their attention, 
He said, I've let it rain in certain places and not in others. Those places dried up. Trying to get your attention. Perhaps there's things we go through in our life. We may feel like a dry spot. Perhaps may, maybe God's trying to get your attention. Perhaps you've lost your thirst for God like you once had. And God now is trying to get your attention. Amen. I don't want to be like these people that Amos spoke about, but you never got thirsty for me. You never got thirsty for me. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. Say, God, make me thirsty for you. Let it be more important than anything in my life. Amen. Anything else in my life is touching you. It's really all that matters. Touching Jesus is really all that matters. Amen. Put your hands to heaven this morning. Say, Lord, I give up. Give it all to you, Jesus. Amen. I surrender all to you, Jesus. It's all for you. Aren't you glad he's a mercy for God? Hallelujah. He's a life-saving God. Hallelujah. And over and over, again and again, God is faithful. Over and over, again and again, through it all, He's made me able to stand and survive, to come through life when it sure looked like I couldn't win. But Jesus is with me, and I'll claim the victory over and over. Oh, sing it with me now. Over and over, again and again, God is faithful. Over and over, again and again, through it all, He's made me able to stand and survive, to come through alive when it sure looked like I could win. But Jesus is with me, and I'll claim the victory over and over again. And I stood at the bank of a wide raging river, trusting that I'd get across. Yeah. I made my way through some valleys and deserts, believing I'd never get lost. And I stood at the foot what seemed like Mount Everest but knowing I the strength to climb cause every trial is test and temptation one thing is sure every time and over and over again and again God is faithful over and over again and again through it all He's made me able to stand and survive, to come through alive when it sure looked like I could win. But Jesus is with me, and I'll claim the victory over and over again. And you ask me why I have no hesitation. God does what he says he would do. Hallelujah. I'd simply say, for each battle he's taught me, there's nothing that he can't help me through. And when I look just beyond them, yeah. I'll see the way that this ends is great celebration. Deep in my heart, I really believe. And over and over, again and again, God is faithful. Over and over, again and again, through it all, He made me able to stand and survive, to come through life when it sure looked like I could win. But Jesus is with me, and I'll claim the victory over it. Oh, sing it one more time. Over and over, again and again, God is faithful. Yes, He is. Over and over, again and again, through it all. He made me able to stand and survive, to come through life when it sure looked like I could win. 
Jesus is with me, and I'll claim the victory over and over again. Again and again, God is faithful. Yes. Over and over again and again through it all. He's made me able to and survive. To come through alive with a show look like I could win. But Jesus is with me, and I claim the victory over and over again. And you ask me why, I have no hesitation. God does what He says He will do. I'd simply say, through each battle he's taught me, there's nothing that he can help me through. And when I look just beyond them, I'll see the way that this ends is great celebration. Deep in my heart, I really believe. And over and over, again and again, God is faithful. Over and over, again and again, through it all, He's made me able to stand and survive, to come through alive with a sure look like I could win. But Jesus is with me, and I claim the victory over 